broke. Anybody else in here grow up broke? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. I had the off-brand food for everything. I even had off-brand animal crackers. And they weren't even the real fucking animals. They're like rats and mice and pigeons and shit. How do you grow up trying to trade food with the kid at the lunch table? He's like, what is this, a pit bull? Get that the fuck out of here. I don't need your ghetto-ass animal crackers. It's the best my parents could do. Don't make fun of me. No, I have a lot of student debt. And a guy gave me a call the other day trying to collect it. He's like, is this Jeffrey Horst? Is this Jeffrey? I'm like, yes, this is him. Jeffrey, I'm calling to inform you that you have an outstanding balance. I'm like, wow, thank you. <laughs> an outstanding balance. I am flattered, really. <laughs> if you think it's so outstanding now, <laughs> wait till next month when I still don't pay you shit. It'll be a fucking spectacular balance. I'll call you next month, buddy. We can, we can set a high score with this balance. <laughs> I asked my boss for a raise, he said no. I'm bitter, so now I just steal a dollar's worth of shit every hour from the office. It's so much easier. No, I, I, I just, to help me with dealing uh, with me being broke, I have an alert on my phone. It sends me a text message whenever I'm low on funds. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm always low on funds. It's, I didn't think this through. And I don't even have unlimited text messaging, so now I get overages? <laughs> They're making me more poor, telling me that I'm poor. That doesn't help. In some situations, you don't want to get this text message. Like, let's say you're on a date, all right? You don't want to get this text. I got that text. I was on a first date, okay? And you know how first date goes. I'm trying to order expensive food. I don't want her to know that I'm broke, so I'm all like, hmm, what am I going to get? Maybe I'll get the lobster, maybe a bottle of champagne. Then my phone vibrates. She's like, who's that? Chase Bank. Well, what are they saying? They're saying that I'm getting the grilled cheese and a water. Uh, look at that, you're getting a side salad. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna need 10 bucks for gas. That's what, that's what Chase Bank just said. Now I have to try and look nice and work out because I might have to marry somebody for health insurance. That sucks. Some guy's gonna ask if they can buy me a drink. I'm like, no, but you can buy me pre-diabetic screening. It's pretty hot. Yeah. And I know that girls are whispering about me. They're all bitchy. They're like, oh my God, look at her. She's a preventative healthcare slut. I heard that she sucked a dick for a flu shot. No. I sucked a dick for Vicodin, and that's super normal. Yeah, everybody does that, come on. But I, I went to school for sound recording, work at a recording studio, you know, and paid all this money and found out I could have showed up at a recording studio with a bag of weed and a pizza and gotten the same education. But you get like on the job training, that's the difference between you know college and the studio. And I learned, what I learned was that my boss liked to chew on pens and the guy in the band hated my boss so he stuck all the pens up his ass. Yeah, so, so I learned don't chew on the pens and don't piss off the guy in the band. Yeah, that's how, because other jobs that I had, if you piss off the customer, piss off the client, you know, you get like reprimanded or written up or something like that. There you got ass particles in your mouth. <laughs> But yeah, man, this is Black History Month. Uh, black history fact for the white folks. Uh, a black man invented the traffic light. I didn't make that shit up, that's the truth. Look at it, it's red, yellow, and green. <laughs> Them African colors, motherfucker. <laughs> so, uh, if a white man invented it, it would have been red, white, and blue. <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> I like, I like comedy, man. I like coming out. Scully, you got a nice location. Nice location, nice place to be. Uh, the food is excellent. I had some food. Y'all know I had the chicken. It was fried and that shit was delicious. And it was easy to order. It wasn't like being at KFC. I went to KFC. I'm like, ah, I'm hungry than a motherfucker. 
can I get a three piece please? And the lady behind the counter, she's like, is that gonna be crispy, original, grilled? I'm like, damn, y'all got a lot of options. Crispy, I guess. And then she's like, is that gonna be white or dark meat? Bitch, I'm hungry. I don't care what race my chicken is. Bitch, I'm hungry. Feed my skinny black ass. Give me the white meat. And she looks at me, she says, are you sure? Because the dark meat is cheaper, bitch. <laughs> White, my white friends know that black people, yeah, we name our kids shit that we never had. Like Porsche, Mercedes. Yeah, some of us may own a Lexus. I bumped into somebody named the other day, her name was fucking abortion. <laughs> I met a nigga in the street, his name was College. I'm like, yeah, it's getting fucked up out here. It's getting fucked up. But it's crazy, cause my white friends, y'all name, y'all kids shit they gonna grow up to be like dick. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> That's what black folks call the police, Jake's. <laughs> Y'all better learn. Y'all better learn. I'm telling you. I love my baby mama as well. Speaking of baby mama, happy Black History Month. Yeah, yeah. Right? My Jerry James Brown Jr. in the front. Uh, I celebrate Black History Month because I'm seven and a half percent black. Most women think that I'm talking about my penis. No, I'm talking about that portion of me that loves fried chicken and talks during the movie. Come on, really? Not even from you, James? Damn, I wrote that just for you. Oh. Uh, actually celebrate Black History Month, I did notice that uh, Ruffles came out with chicken and waffles flavored potato <laughs> chips. I didn't make that shit up, that's real. I was like, damn. Uh, I, was, uh, I was looking at Facebook the other day, my sister's here to see me today. Give an applause for my sister, she's beautiful. Did you just look, Fitch, did you just look at my sister? Uh, I was actually on her Facebook page and there was a picture of her standing and she was posing with a black guy. And one of my asshole friends goes, what are you kidding, your sister's hanging out with black guys? Yeah. Doesn't that piss you off? And I'm like, dude, I am ecstatic that she's hanging out with black guys. You are absolutely racist. Because you know what, when that serial killer shows up, at least I know she's not the first to die. <laughs> oh man, you know what? Uh, I'm a big fan of reading. Uh, my wife and I both read before we go to bed every night. And we got to the problem where you're both tired enough to where neither one of you guys want to get off your ass and go turn the light off. So I went out and I bought the clapper. Hey, problem solved. We get done reading, clap my hands, the light goes off. Now, I will also tell you that uh, when the mood strikes, next thing you know you're getting busy, that strobe light's going off. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, last week I was throwing down some of my best moves, and she's arching her back, and her arms are flailing, and then I realized uh, that she was having an epileptic seizure because of the strobe light. <laughs> it's okay, honestly guys, it's okay, don't worry about it, because I finished. <laughs> Speaking of finished, that's my time, you guys. Pete McCarthy, thank you very much for laughing with me. getting weird, isn't it? Your manners are going away, right? Like people are being disrespectful a whole lot. I think the other day I was in this parking lot, this guy across the parking lot, he was like, hey, hey, you trying to fuck? And I was like, uh, how did he know? Like, how did this guy know? And I was like, what kind of vibes was I giving off? But it was rude that he was yelling. He didn't have to yell. He could have come over and just given me a note. Like you guys, uh, I'm not giving any secrets away to anybody right now, but when you when you see a guy do this, right, like you you know what he's doing, right? Like he's adjusting himself, ladies. Like if you didn't know, he's moving the furniture around is what I'm trying to say, right? So it's no trade secrets. I saw a woman doing this the other day. You, you know what she was telling me? She was telling me she had balls and was a dude. That's what she was telling me. It's, she was telling me. It's gross. <laughs> Um, people, people in authority, like, ask really weird questions, 
Like uh, this weekend, I was performing at a club in Windsor, Ontario, so I was had to cross the border. And uh, as I was coming back, you know, I was just by myself. I was I was coming back. The border guard said, uh, "You by yourself?" <laughs> like, do you fucking see someone I don't see? Like, are you allowed to do drugs on the job? Like, what's? Like, yeah, no, I got a guy in the back. That's where I keep my passengers in the trunk. That's where they like to sit. It's comfortable in there for them. The trunk, a lot of leg room in the trunk. Like, what's he asking me? Like, one time I got pulled over by a cop, and he thought maybe I was drunk. I wasn't drunk, but he was like doing the whole DUI thing. So he asked me a question. He's like, all right, I want to ask you a math question here. Uh, I want you to pick a number between 16 and 14. <laughs> and it fucking threw me off, right? Because I'm like, there's one number, but I'm like, it can't be that easy, right? It can't, it can't, like what? I was like, 15? Get out of the car. Get out of the car. You dumb fuck. <laughs> Do you guys, uh, you guys ever listen to Christian uh, rock radio stations? You ever listen to that? I think they use they, they use uh, subliminal messages in the Christian rock radio stations. Because whenever I turn one on, I just go, Jesus Christ. And it's like, wow. They did. They got me to think about what they want me to think about. Or they, they did it. I don't know how they did that. But they, it's Jesus. And I was like, wow. <laughs> on target. <laughs> I, uh... I'm not, I'm not married, and uh, I'm not sure I ever want to get married. I'm assuming there's married couples in here, right? Good, good for you if you're married. Uh, there's a lot of rules. <laughs> He's a little excited about being married. That's, um, there's rules when you're married, though, right? Like, there's rules. Like, the, the big rule, obviously, is that uh, monogamy thing. Like, you can't fuck around, right? Like, that's a rule that you need to be aware of when you get married, like right off the bat. You gotta, you can't, this guy's fucking everybody tonight. It's just like, you just, you can't, you can't. And it's so like, I don't know, like, I mean, it's cool at first. Like when you get in a relationship with someone, you're like, oh man, the sex is great. You're just fucking away. You're doing whatever, all sorts of crazy nonsense. But then like, you're married 20 years, right? Like, it's still like, I compare it to like steak, right? Like, no, I like steak, man. I'll eat steak every day of the week, but if all I could eat was steak for 20 fucking years, that's why I like going to buffets. Buffets are better. I like going to buffets. I get something nice and spicy. I can get something nice and creamy. Hell, hell I'll eat dirty shit off the floor. I don't care. So, so yeah, I don't think I can get married, ladies. <laughs> I don't do things unless I'm sure I can win. So I started eating. And I won. I just got a memory foam mattress and I'm pretty sure it's got Alzheimer's. You know like uh, when you go to shake somebody's hand and they're really bad at it. It's just kind of limp and gross and weird. It's what it feels like every time I get into that bed. It's like I've got to remind it, like, yes, I'm your owner. I purchased you. You are my bed. Memory foam mattress. And maybe it's not, uh, maybe it's not Alzheimer's. Maybe it just chose to forget. Because I got a feeling I would too if a man of my size tried to climb on top of me half naked every day. And like, uh, like 20 years from now, it's just gonna snap one day, and it's all just gonna come rushing back. It's gonna have to go to the sleep doctor, or wherever, wherever mattresses go. I don't know. I recently joined a Twitter group called Tweet What You Eat to help me start losing some weight, but I had to quit because I couldn't fit it all into 140 characters. Hashtag depressing. <laughs> That's the internet for you. It's done some bad things to good people. An old man at my work recently came up to me and said, Son, I don't like what you're saying to me. I'm about to take you to Fist City which I'm pretty sure to him meant something different than it does to me now, thanks to the internet. He knows. I don't know. 
I have a, I have a child. I got a daughter. She's two. It worked. I don't know. Somehow I talked someone into it, and a baby happened. I'll take it. It looks enough like me to be, for me to be okay with it. And uh, she's trying to use words, trying to say things, trying to make things happen. She's very curious about herself and her body. She's really good at things like, these are my eyes, these are my toes, fingers, and such. And then she gets more curious and wants to know what's going on in this area. And I, as a father, panicked, and I said, that's your business. I said, that is your business, that is nobody else's business. Don't mess with anybody else's business. And I never want to hear that you're open for business. And it's terrible because it's stuck. She starts referring to her area as business, but she can't use words the right way, she says busy. So that's my busy. Which is mortifying as a father because you never want to hear your daughter refer to her vagina as busy. <laughs> Until she's 18, and some people can make a very good living that way. Always gotta hope for better than what you have, right? I don't know. One more, one more thing here, guys. One more thing. Um, I was out with my daughter the other day. Just me, just me and her. Was she busy? She was not under my watch, sir. She will not be busy. Stay away, Joe Williams. Yeah. And your schoolyard antics. I don't know. Um, I had to use the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom with a two-year-old daughter in tow. And it's very awkward. It's a terrible situation. You can't leave them outside, so you bring them in, right? I'm at a Best Buy, and I think, what better place to go to the bathroom with a two-year-old girl than at a Best Buy? Who's possibly in here, right? But I go in, and apparently it's Geek Squad break time. Because a bunch of people who look like you were in there using the, I don't, they weren't even using the bathroom, they were just waiting and staring at the door for this particular activity to happen. And they were like, he's gotta go, you can tell. I was walking around with her like, okay, let's do this thing. So they went in and they waited, and here I come, me and my daughter in tow, and my first thought was, okay, let's go through. <laughs> I'm still trying to keep that from happening. Uh, let's get through the gauntlet of creepy weirdos. Like, they're desensitized to child porn because they're the guys that you take the computer to to wipe it all clean once you've been infected so they know everything. They're like, well, oh, I've seen this one. Control, all delete. I don't know what you do with computers or whatever. So I'm like, okay, we'll just filter our way through break time and we'll head to the stall. And then I'm like, I can't just leave her unattended. I can't just turn around and do my thing while she's like licking the floor. I don't know. She's two, okay guys? So I'm like, okay, I'll just turn around and I'll sit and do my business. And I'm like, no, because then I've got to watch her watch me while I watch her while I do that. And it's no good, I'm not doing this. So then I had this other thought, briefly. I will put her on my shoulders and I'll go up to the urinal, right? And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, guys, because she can't see me, because I can't, right? But, but, that gives her a bird's eye view of the Geek Squad up and down the line. So that was the day I pissed my pants. Thank you and good night, everyone. She's going to be starting school here in the fall, and it uh, kind of gets me worried and everything because this whole bullying thing. I mean, because I know a little bit about that, man. The short, fat, white kid with the last name Welfare, he got bullied all the time. So, But I didn't fight my battles with my fists. I usually fought my battles with my mouth, which more or less in the end I ended up getting my ass kicked anyway. But, I mean, we'd be riding on the bus, and they'd be like, You're on welfare. And I'd be like, Time out, dude. Uh, I get dropped off at a house, and you get dropped off at a trailer. And he's like, So? You're fat. 
but again, dude, my parents can't afford to feed me, and I uh, just can't. And then they'd always go, well, you're white. I'd be like, thank God here. Let's recap real quick, all right? I live in a house, you don't. My parents can't afford to feed me, and I'm white. I'm failing to see how you're putting me down, and that's usually when I'd get my ass kicked, so I mean, I wonder how she's going to be handling this. Do we have any other parents in the crowd? Any parents? We got a few parents. All right. Parents, you guys ever like to say stuff to your kids to kind of just throw them off a little bit for all the times they mess with you? All right, some of you guys do. I do. My dad used to do that with me when I was little, believe it or not. I used to be a finicky eater, and if it wasn't pizza, it was crap to me. So if my mom put some, like, dry chicken and some vegetables down for me, I'm, like, I'm not eating that. And my dad would kind of do this, like, intimidation thing with me where he'd stare at me and stare at the plate, and then he'd try to throw some wisdom on me. He usually went like this. David, I want you to think about all the starving children in Africa that would love to have that plate of food. Like, really, Dad? Name one. Well, now the torch has been passed on to me, and I love to mess with my daughter any chance I get. So the other day she came up to me, she said, Daddy, Daddy, I want a new brother or sister to play with. So I told her to go play with the Kleenex under Daddy's bed. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I like that one. I like this one too. I'm a single father. I am. Uh, I wanted to imagine that. I know. But uh, <laughs> it was, I always like to outdo my ex a little bit. So if my uh, daughter comes up to me and wants something, I, I'm always willing to oblige. And recently she came up to me and she said, Daddy, I want a kitty. And I was like, all right. So we went and got her a kitty. She loves this cat. And the cat loves her. The only problem is, like, whenever it's time to, like, go to bed or, or it's time to leave the house, she'll start crying uncontrollably. She'll be like, I I don't want to leave the house. Or I don't want to go to bed. I'll be like, honey, what's wrong? And she's, I'm worried that when I wake up or when we get back, Nala, that's the name of the cat, she isn't going to be there, daddy. And I'll say, honey, come here, come here. Shh, and I'll hold her close and I'll rub her back and I'll say, honey, I promise you, this kitten, it's nothing like your mother. It's going to be there tomorrow morning. You don't know her, so fuck off, right? <laughs>
almost black because my black people will back me up. His dad is from Africa, and his mom grew up somewhere like in Iowa. This motherfucker never had real fried chicken until he got with Michelle Obama. Am I right, black people? You think he know what collard greens are? Hell no. But no, it's 2013, and we all want the same thing. You want a good job, right? Hell yeah. Exactly. You want to send your kids to a good school, right? Sir, right? And sir, I too want to fuck a white girl. <laughs> If you're a midget and you're also a prostitute, you got no choice but to sell yourself short. <laughs> Where the fuck is the drums at, Chris? You got one fucking job. All you can think about is grooming your goatee. Fucking Walter White goatee back there. That's a meth dealer, in case you guys were wondering who that was. I used to date a chick, and uh, she was pretty stupid. Um, like six months into her relationship, she was having stomach pains, which is kind of scary. Like, when I have stomach pains, I just got a shit or whatever. But uh, it was scary, because she was having stomach pains, and uh, we had had unprotected sex, and uh, I'm lazy, so I was just like, whatever. So I was worried, and uh, so she had to go to the doctor, she had to get uh, urgent ultrasounds apparently, so she went and got the ultrasounds, and she came out of the doctor's office, she was crying, she was hysterical, she's like, oh my god, uh, the doctor told me I have ruptured cysts in my ovaries, and I was like, thank god, <laughs> thought you had a non-ruptured baby in there. <laughs> What's an Italian's favorite search engine? Bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> what do you call it when two Italians are playing table tennis? Bada boom, bada ping, palm. Listen, I, sm I do drugs. <laughs> Pieces of shit in here. I can't even read my own fucking handwriting. I don't know what's going on. What's it say on here? Go to the clinic. That's not a joke. <laughs> Let's just go to clinic too. How many times did I write that down? Um, I'll leave you guys with this. Uh, I don't even know where to go from here. Um, I, uh, I used to have a terrible job. Used to work at a cash register and the prices were super high. And a woman, uh, she got real pissed one day and she told me to eat shit and die. And uh, I was like, that's kind of fucked up. But then I thought about it. Wouldn't it be worse to eat shit and live? Um, <laughs> fuck that joke. I'm going to do something else. <laughs> Who gives a, where do you guys have to, what do you have to do after this? Yeah, like oh, more what? Better. You, it sounds like I'm fucking you right now. What do you want? <laughs> I probably can't give you more or better. Oh, that's, that reminds me. Uh, my buddies the other day, they're bragging about getting blowjobs. Uh, Cause my buddy was like, yeah, man, I got really into it and then I made her gag. And I was like, the only time I've made a chick gag is when I took my shirt off. <laughs> and that's, that's fucking it, you guys. That's as good as it's gonna get tonight, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, you guys. I love you. My name is Garrett Elzadiz. Have a great night.